You have reached level 5 of Wiggle Racer. If you would like to make a call, please hang up and try again. Welcome to part 5, Wiggle Racer. First thing I'm going to do is going to clean one teeny tiny itsy bitsy thing up. Um, if you noticed in our code, when we're keeping track of the game state, at the very beginning we set it equal to intro, and then when we exit the intro screen, we set it to game, and then when we exit the game screen we set it to end well i forgot oopsie to set it back to intro when we exit our end screen and there's no real harm in forgetting to do this but just in case we were basing our game off of this sort of infrastructure where we expect the game state to be what it actually is well we need to correct that right so right here just at the very bottom underneath our function called exit end screen we want to go ahead and say game state state equals intro because we are going back to our intro screen right here all right so what we're going to handle in this video is adding more than one computer player because right now we can set our difficulty we start we start our game super duper fun but there's no challenge in in any of this really it's just kind of you know you play the game and you're getting the same boring thing over and over again so let's add another computer player so on our main stage if we lock and hide everything but our racers layer we can just go ahead and drag on another racer so I'm going to drag on that other racer I'm going to call it MC computer 2 so very similar to how we named our first computer player and I'm going to align these up with our align panel. So I'm align them to the left. And I'm going to distribute the vertical center. So that way they all kind of look nice and pretty. And there we go. But now what happens if I run this? Well, okay, I added the player. But none of the code actually handles the extra computer player. So let's go to our main stage. Sorry, and on underneath our actions, we want to add all this stuff for the computer player but how do we know what to change we've done so much already you know what like what are we supposed to do i don't understand well here's an easy way to figure it out if we press Control and f it'll bring up a menu for find and replace and we can search for mc computer one because so far we've named everything mc computer one for our first computer player so if i click find next this is basically everything we need to copy or mimic for computer player 2. So I clicked find next starting at the top and on line 21 I have the original X for my computer 1. So I'm going to copy paste. Oh, am I not going to copy? Copy. Oh, my keyboard shortcuts are disabled by this. Okay. So copy paste. I change everything to not 1 but 2 and then press control F again and I'm going to move down to the next thing I need to replace or copy I guess so right here we have remove child so I'm going to copy paste MC computer 2 okay fine next what else we got copy paste computer 2 so we're picking the color then I guess right here we need to Oops. Undo. Paste this here. The on computer two. Find. We're gonna add difficulty for the speed. Paste two. And if the computer goes off the right side of the stage. Computer. So this whole thing here, we need to copy. lines paste so if computer 2 is greater than computer 2 not is finished with race is finished with race blah, 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 blah. and we can maybe clean this up later but for now this is what we're gonna do so that's all been changed make sure I changed all of it I did next and game let's copy this 
Erase this. Oops, let me do two, two, save, and nope, oh, that's right here. So copy, paste, computer two. Reset and then finish with the race. Next. And there you go, I've replaced everything. And you can see that's pretty tedious to um, add on just one computer. It's it's pretty difficult. Uh, there's an easier way to do this and a better way to do this with a concept that you have not learned yet. Actually two concepts. One loops and two arrays. And I'll explain those pretty much after this game I'll, I'll start going over those things but <clears throat> if you did everything correctly when we start our game we should have three players and they should move so if we lose it should say we came in third which we do and if we come in first it says first cool but this is kind of pointless, isn't it, right? Because these computers both go the same speed. So let's add a bit of randomness to our game in order to provide some variation and just to make it a little more interesting. So what we need to do is create a variable in our racer for how fast we want them to go. So if we go under our library, underneath racer, and our actions underneath racer, we would need to create a new variable. So we say var, oops, speed, and we'll just make it, uh, let's make it a number. Oops, it needs to be capital N. Make it a number, and we'll just set it equal to zero to start. We'll say, we'll store how fast the racer can go. So I'll save that. And now what we need to do is back into our main stage under actions, we need to say, instead of adding the difficulty, what we need to do is add their speed. So there's two ways that we can do this, um, but I'm just gonna say MC computer one dot speed. I'll say MC computer Two dot speed. So if we run this, there's going to be a problem in that we never set speed to anything besides zero. So when, um, when we pull the selected difficulty in our start game function, we also need to say MC computer one dot speed equals difficulty. And then we also need to see, say MC computer 2.speed equals difficulty. And if we run this, we're going to end up with what we started with, right? We get this, you know, we get this thing where they're going the same exact speed. Well, that's because we set their speed equal to the same thing. So let's actually create a random number to be pushed into speed. So for computer 1, I'll say math dot random. So it'll give me a number between zero and one, not including one. And we'll just multiply it by the difficulty. And we can do the same thing for the bottom here. So now we should get two computer players where the fastest they can go is a difficulty and the slowest they can go is one. And let's just test this out. So the slowest they can go is zero, excuse me fastest they can go is difficulty, the slowest they can go is zero. So if I click this, you can see now that they're moving at two different speeds. This one isn't moving at all, all right? Restart, start. Did we mess something up? Hold on, let me see. Then speed equals math at random times difficulty. Let me make sure, is that just happened? Okay, that was just a coincidence. But you see how this game can be kind of bad, right? If, if these things don't move at all, where's the challenge? I mean, maybe there's a bit of a challenge, but we want to at least have them moving at like a minimum speed, don't we? Look at that. That's, that's not even, that's not a challenge. That's not fun. That's, 
kind of bad. So what we can do is we can change our random number to be at least one. And to keep it in the range, here's what we're going to do. We're going to say math.random times or wrap difficulty in parentheses minus one. So if our difficulty is five, this number here will be four. And then we get a number between zero and four. So you see where I'm going with this? Then we add one, we get a number between one and five. So if we put parentheses around this whole thing and say plus one, get a random speed between one and difficulty. Okay, and then we can just copy this end part here, put it down here. And now if we run, the minimum speed that we'll get should be one. So these things should never actually sit still. And there we go. We start again. There we go. Okay, so these things are at least always moving. And you never know what speed you're going to get. So it makes the game just a little more interesting. And maybe, maybe we need to have a higher difficulty in this case which you're kind of just playing the numbers. So maybe you'll get lucky and they'll all go slow. Maybe you'll get unlucky and they'll all go a little faster. But either way, there's a higher chance of you losing with a higher difficulty. So I would recommend keeping it at five. It's still a good number to play with. But now we have multiple computer players and we have a random speed that is set for our computers and I mean these are just little things you're adding onto a game to make them more interesting and you might want to change the range so that it's at least maybe two or something along those lines um, because right now if we're I mean one is is still pretty slow like that's that's not even really a challenge so maybe you want to say the minimum is two play with that I'm actually you not know after play testing you'll have to play test yours so you can set this range to really whatever you want. But if I change both of these numbers to two, it'll give me a range between two and whatever the difficulty is. So if I run this again, and I say start, and the minimum speed is a little bit, um, a little bit faster. So we go, and it just makes it a little more challenging. There is still a chance that these two things will run at the same speed or very similar speeds but you can see that we're just testing out the game making sure it works and you can actually wiggle it or you can just sort of drag the mouse along it's just whatever works for you so that's it for this part of the video it's pretty straightforward but you can see how you can easily add on to a game just to add more features and to make it more interesting